Hi there, welcome to the Player YouTube channel where we don't just do car reviews, we do tons of other stuff as well. You ready? Run the VT. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. So here we are, the Morgan Roadster. Guys, guess what? It's another morning here, out in the sunny France. Hi there, and welcome to this week's Player YouTube car review. Yes, and this week is, believe it or not, the Volkswagen Tygo. It's another one of those subcompact SUV crossovers that joins the line of the like of the T-Cross and the T-Rock, the Tiguan, all of that lot that you're probably already aware of. But this is more of a SUV coupe. It's got that sort of style to it. It was launched in July 2021, so it hasn't been around for a long time. However, what we need to do is get around it, get in the back, have a look what it's like for the driver, get it out on the road, and give you our evaluation of the Volkswagen Tygo. The VW Tygo comes in three different trim levels. You've got the entry level car, which is the Life, and that starts at 23,000 UK pounds. If you want something a little bit more comfort and luxurious, go for the style, and that starts at around 25,000 UK pounds. Top of the range cars, the sporty look and a bit more dynamic is the R line, and that will start from around 26,000 UK pounds. 15 different color combinations. However, if you like solid gray, that's the only one you won't have to pay extra for. All the others will range from 225 to 1,025 pounds extra. Your entry level car comes with body colored bumpers, LED running lights, LED headlights with auto dip beam, very handy when you're out on the country lanes. You get some nice black roof bars, 16 inch alloys, and not forgetting, some foldy in mirrors that heat up in the winter. And in addition to that lot, you also get electric windows at the back. You get a rear wash wipe, which is rather handy. A nice little roof spoiler with a built-in brake light there. You get LED lights all the way across the back here, which is rather nice. And then most importantly, you get parking sensors with this car. And finally, with your entry level car, you will get a digital instrument cluster, an eight inch TFT touchscreen, which is very nice indeed. You get cruise control, autonomous braking in town, and a DAB radio with Bluetooth connectivity, Apple Play, Android mirroring, and if all that gets too much for you, it comes with air. Under the bonnet of the Tygo, you've got a couple of different engine choices, both of which are petrol. You've got a one litre three cylinder engine that develops either 95 or 110 brake horsepower, or you can go for a four cylinder 1.5 litre engine that develops 150 brake horsepower. Both of the engines could be married up to a seven speed auto gearbox. However, only the one litre engines can have the six speed manual gearbox that's available. 0 to 60 time is just over 10 seconds with a top speed of just over 100 miles an hour. So it's not gonna break any records when it comes to speed. First up, pretty good looking car from behind, irrespective of a few little fake vents here and there, but I do like the look of this car. I love the fact that the LED lights sweep all the way across at the back here, really, really nice. 
Bit of a short screen on this car. However, you still do get a decent view out the back. But I love the fact that these are all now floaty screens, as I call them. So there's no rubbers in there for the water to get trapped in and the rust to start building up. Little bit of aero going on here. I think that's more just to keep the rear screen clear rather than improve the economy. But generally, the looks on it, I think it's a pretty good looking car. Right, there isn't an assisted tail lift on this car, no electronically assisted tail lift. Couple of decent gas struts, you don't really need it to be honest. Inside here you've got 438 litres of boot space. To give you an idea of that space, that's equivalent to about five carry-on suitcases. You know the ones you take on a plane? So you get about five of them in there quite easily. Um, and if you compare it to other cars, it's slightly bigger than a Nissan Juke, just to let you know out there if you're thinking of buying a Juke. Um, the only thing I have noticed in here, there aren't any shopping bag holders, there isn't a 12 volt adapter. Bit naughty, bit penny pinching that, it's very easy to put those bits and pieces in. I think that's a little bit of a shame. Um, the other thing I hate, as you know if you watch me on a regular basis, parcel shelves. If they don't go underneath, we get rid of them because they are a complete waste of space. If you're out on the road and you've got suddenly you've got to pick up the kids with the bikes for some reason or the dogs or whatever, you know what I'm talking about, this can be in the way. And it either ends up on the passenger's laps or you, I've, in some cases, I've even had to leave it somewhere and go back for it on another occasion. So it's nice if it goes in. Let's test that first. We're gonna pop it out. It's very easy to pop out on this one. You just lift it like that. It's a decent quality. Um, you have to turn it upside down. You've got some catches either side that hold the base of the boot up and you just slide it straight in there like that. It pops in there and pop that down. Job done, there you go, perfect. So we like that one, it's all right. However, it does get in the way when I show you what this car can do next. So we do have to remove it, unfortunately, to give you the next demonstration in the back of the Tygo. So I'm gonna put it out of the way because this doesn't work. This car has a split level boot floor. So you can actually lower it by quite a lot. You just pop it out like that, lower it down to the next section, slide it into its little locator holes there, and you do get about that much extra on the headroom there. You're not gonna be using it that often, not unless you just suddenly invested in a Great Dane or an Irish Wolfhound, let's put it that way. There's plenty of room when it's in its normal position, and there's also quite a massive drop down here as well. One good thing about this car, yes, I'm gonna pull this back out because we're gonna put it into its normal position to demonstrate next. Leave that popped up there. Check it out, we have a space saver. Yes, a space saver. There's no pump, there's no latex, none of that stupid stuff. There's a space saver in there. Wicked, amazing. I love that. Well done, Volkswagen. That's, that's the sort of thing I wanna see on all cars. Forget the stupid latex and the pumps. Space savers, that's the way forward. Right, so we'll pop that back down. As I said, 438 litres of space, loads there. It's a 60-40 split on the wheels, on the, on the wheels? Who put wheels in there? <laughs> on the seats in the back, there we go. So I'm gonna push them down, quite easy to do as well. Just do it from the back here. And there you go. It's, it's a lovely bit of versatile space. You can get both, you can easily get a bike in there, get a couple of push chairs in there, whatever you need to. And as I say, you know, it, at the end of the day, versatility is the name of the game when it comes to compact SUV. Well, let's see what it's like to get in and out of the back of this car. Um, it's fairly simple. It's got quite a lot of headroom. I wasn't expecting that because it's a, a sort of coupe shaped SUV. I was thinking that the headroom would be a lot lower than what it is, but it's been very cleverly designed. There's a lot of room here. Even someone of, you know, six foot, you know, nearly two meters would sit in there quite comfortably. A Couple of LED courtesy lights up there, or reading lights, really nice if you're having a little read late at night or whatever. Um, the only thing is I hate these sort of, you know, pockets. There's no real reason for them, I suppose you know, manufacturers are still make them because it's like a, a traditional design thing. But I think um, VW could have done a little bit better on the back of the seat here. One thing I am impressed with, you do get two USB-C points in the back here. So it's good if you have got young teenagers and they need to charge their bits and pieces, there's not gonna be a problem. There's no air con in the back for the passengers, not even air vents here. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I would have thought, especially this car being one of the top level cars, you would have had that automatically, but there isn't anything with this car. Very high transmission tunnel in the middle, which is gonna make climbing across to the middle seat if you're gonna try and get three people in here quite difficult. You're gonna be spread across there. Um, you could just about get away with it, three of you across here. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be a lift home from the restaurant or the pub or you know one of those late nights when you've had a few drinks or something and you're getting a lift back and you're helping someone out. 
that's about it. I don't see you going for more than 20 minutes, half an hour in the back here, not in the middle seat anyway. However, sitting on the either side of these, very, very comfortable. I love the material, the finish on this. Um, it's definitely one of those wipe and spills or spill and wipes, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's really good, especially if it's, this is going to be a family car. Um, you do get the Isofix points either side, but you know, they're absolutely massive, great holes in this car. Um, there's no covers for them. They're not sort of hidden away within the seat. I just think it looks really, really ugly. Um, however, it's there for a purpose and I suppose it makes getting the seat, you know, the child seat in and out easy. Uh, recessed seat belts. There's no central armrest. I wasn't, you know, I was expecting something maybe, you know, I wasn't expecting the, um, the ski hatch, but I was expecting an armrest with a double cup holder or something because there's nowhere to put your drinks. So if you're in the back here for a long period of time and someone gives you a coffee, coffee or an energy drink or whatever you're having, you're going to have to hold it and you know then it starts to get awkward. But that's about the only comments I can make in here. Apart from that, it's comfortable, it's spacious, it's quite airy. Yeah, I think it's all right. Let's go and check what it's like for the driver up front. So the one thing I do love about this car, believe it or not, is the digital instrument cluster. I love it. And the eight inch TFT touchscreen that sort of lights up when you put your hand near it. Very Volkswagen. Um, Apart from that, very comfortable, well bolstered seat, great view straight out there, lovely windshield on this car. And then just everything else sort of just drops into place nicely because at the end of the day, VW build cars that people like to drive and they know where we like bits and pieces. So over here on the right hand side, you've got your lighting control button. Just set that to auto, nice and simple. You can put your rear fogs on and your front fogs there. You know, you have to do that manually, obviously. Um, you've got your wiper stalk in the usual position. You've got your lighting your dip beam and your high beam um, stalk which is over here and your indicator but don't forget with this car you do get auto high beam so once you've pushed it forward and done your bit it will do it itself it just senses what's coming along the road we like that let's have a look see what you get with your steering wheel so plenty of manipulation there that's great so no matter how tall you are how short you are or whether you want to drive like that or whether you like driving like that you're gonna find the ideal position with that. I like that, it's loads of movement in that steering. It's manual, don't need all that electronic stuff, does it nice and quickly. Got paddles on the back here as well. This is the seven speed auto, so you get the paddles. I love that as well. Um, on the right hand side here, you've got your different views that you can set up in your cluster here. By pushing that button, it will change the view. Um, you've got your ask VW button up the top there, and then down the bottom here, you've got your track change or your radio station change left and right which is great and there's an okay button in the middle when you're using the menu in the center section there just going left and right up and down very easy to use i love that all your engine uh, your car driving buttons are over here on the left you also have a volume button here as well for the for the sound whatever you're listening to that's below that um, but above it are your lane keepy your distance control you've got your speed limiter you've got your cruise control all built in there again very very easy to use guys you know you're not going to be sitting there half an hour trying to figure that one out that's for sure um, let's have a look at the TFT touchscreen itself but it as you know it's, it's sort of what I call a, a sensitive screen as you put your hand near it you know all about those if ever you've had a, a VW um, again you've got the separate buttons here but you've got the widgets you can choose from you can go into your radio Video, and then you can just scroll across all you it's really quick and very nice to use I've also noticed guys we've got a couple of knobs which is really unusual you don't normally get these knobs when you've got this set up um, but we do have a volume knob over there and an on off knob uh, it does both obviously and then you've got a scroll knob over here on the right hand side to change between stations or tracks or whatever so you know again you've got the two options here but I love the fact you've got a knob there you get in there and if someone's left the radio really loud and you're trying to find out how to turn it down and you've got gloves on or wet hands and you're trying to move you know what I'm saying that's why I love a knob I like good old-fashioned knobs you can't beat them um let's have a look down the center section here you do get the world's smallest cubby in here I can just about get my phone in there that's about it I think it's about as good enough to uh, to keep you know so a bag of sweets in there that's about it um double cup holder in the center here however you can't get a cup in it um it's a double energy drink holder that's about the only way i can describe it because i tried and even on a standard you know regular cup from one of the takeaway coffee companies they don't go in there just kind of sits in the top and then when you come to pull the handbrake on again i was really you know confused suddenly i got a, a, a manual handbrake i wasn't expecting that thought we'd have the electronic handbrake so you get a manual handbrake and that you sort of got your eyes it's, it's really in the way everywhere it just doesn't work 12 volt adapter here we used to we used to light cigarettes off those many many years ago many years ago back in the day um then on your right hand side 
side here, you've got your auto stall button at the top here. You can turn that on and off. Thank you. Because um, it really does annoy me sometimes. You know, when it keeps stopping and it keeps starting, it can get very annoying in traffic. I understand it's for the, you know, for the eco-friendly amongst us. Uh, however, it does, it does get an annoying. Don't say it doesn't. You've got different modes on here as well. You can push your mode button. So we've got eco, normal, sport and individual. I'll go more into that when we get it out on the road. Uh, below that, you've got your self-parking well it doesn't self-park park assistant so you can turn that on and then if you want to pull into a space it will actually help you do that as well um, might not be demonstrating that on camera because they don't always go to plan when you do it on camera and below that you've got your parking sensor button at the bottom so again for any reason you want to turn them off you can I um, can't think of any reason why, but I'm sure there are reasons. Stop start button on this because it is keyless entry and keyless ignition. Even on the entry level car, you get that. Nice little stop start. You've got your air con here. Sadly, on this one, it is, it is the touch set, you know. So if you have got wet hands or you've got gloves on, you are going to take my, I prefer knobs on this. It's so much easier. Look, a knob either side, turn it up, turn it down, whatever. On this one, you have to slide your fingers across it. Let's take a look in the glove box. You're ready for this. Let's see what we can find. Well, it's not too bad. It's a massive glove box, huge, absolutely huge. Um, again, do we really need this, guys? Look, I mean, there's a lot of work gone into that. A lot of carbon offset, you know, or there isn't any carbon offset, should I say. And the cost of these, you know, with all this book and, uh, you know, all this sort of leather wear and everything, it's probably, you know, a quarter of a cow gone into producing that as well. I, re I really think we need to get rid of these. Manufacturers, come on, get rid of these, give us the knobs back and we're getting back, you know. That saved money, you can bring the price down a little bit, make it even more viable if you get my drift. We don't need it, you can put it on the computer or you can go on YouTube, look up, you know, look up whatever you want to know. Well, how do I change a fuse on the new VW Tiger? There you go, I'm sure that's available if you want it. If not, I'll do it for you if you want me to. Leave the comment in the box down below. Um, up here you do get a nice little sunglasses holder as well. I like these, it's always a good place to keep your shades. Nowadays, we all spend a lot of money on our shades. It's nice to keep them out of the way, safe, and they're not getting scratched rolling about down here with your chewing gums and your sweets and your tissues and all the rest of it. Anyway, all in. I do like the Tygo, it's nice. It's very driver focused. It's typical VW, you know, um, but what we need to do is get it out on the road, see what it drives like. That's the most important thing out of this whole review. Let's go and do it. When it comes to safety, the VW Tygo absolutely nails it. 2022, this car received its full five-star NCAP safety rating, which is absolutely brilliant. Both kids and adults scored very highly, 94 and 84% respectively, when it comes to safety inside this car. In addition to that, you do get a fantastic system called the eCall system, which Volkswagen aptly named. If you do unfortunately have an accident in this car, it will contact the emergency services and give them your location. In addition to that, it will also use a secondary braking system so you will avoid a second collision after the first collision. Very clever stuff and something really you would only expect from Volkswagen. In addition to the entry level car getting a bundle of safety aids, which I was quite impressed with, this car obviously gets a few extra bits. It is the R-Line, it's that little bit more money. You get things like the blind spot mirrors. And the good thing about these blind spot mirrors, they're not in the mirror. They're actually on the plastic on the inside themselves. And the reason I like that is because if you do unfortunately smash a mirror, it wouldn't be as expensive as a mirror that has to incorporate the blind spot mirror, if that makes sense. Um, you additionally get things like lane keeping, distance control, cruise control, sign recognition. You've got the autonomous braking as well, which is very, very handy. And that will be right up to 130 miles an hour, believe it or not. Not that this car, I think, will ever make 130 miles an hour. But all in all, you're pretty safe when you're out on the road in this car. And I think that reflects when you're purchasing a car, very much so in today's modern driving. Economy in the Tygo, it's not bad. I'm currently getting 35, nearly 36 to the gallon around town. I'm driving the 1.5 litre with the seven speed auto. And VW claim I should be getting around 46 to 47 miles to the gallon on a combined, you know, the on a run. Um, I reckon 70 miles an hour out on a, you know, on a run for an hour or so, 
easily. It will easily do that. If I'm getting almost 36, 37 around town. So it's not bad for a 1.5 1, 1 litre engine. If you want to save a little bit on the fuel and, the, and you know, economise, shall we say, a little bit more, then buy the 1 litre uh, car that's configured with the 6-speed manual. VW claim that will be getting between 51 and 52, and I can well believe that if this car is going to be up in the 46s and 47s. So not bad at the end of the day when it comes to economy. Actual drivability, well, great all-round peripheral vision, really good vision out the mirror through the back screen, even though it's quite small, it's quite a narrow screen, but when it comes to parking and reversing, although you've got the beepers and on this particular car you have the reverse camera as well, um, you know, all in all, it's a very easy car to drive. One thing I do like about this car, it comes with a mode button. So the mode button is just down here next to your gear shift. Um, you've got four different modes. You've got an economy mode, which is pretty much what I drive it in all the time. You've got a normal mode. Then you've got a sport mode where everything stiffens up a little bit. Uh, you get a little bit more response from the throttle, quicker gear changes, things like that. And finally, you've got an individual mode, which again, you can configure that yourself. Um, driving comfortable, very nice indeed, good brakes, good uh, you know, feeling from the actual car itself in the, in the way it turns into corners, the actual road holding as well. Can't really fault the Tygo. With every new Tygo you will get a three year or 60,000 mile warranty, whichever is going to come first. Um, in addition to that you get a 12 year anti-corrosion warranty and you get a three-year paint warranty. So you're pretty much covered on all that. Don't forget, all of these warranties are transferable if you sell the car before the warranty period is over. Extendable warranties are also available from as little as £140 a year. So no excuse really, you can top them up as and when you need to. Another good thing about this car is the early signs are showing that the residual value on the sales within the next three years are going to be very, very good indeed. And what that means is not only will it hold its price for the second hand market, but on top of that you will get a good leasing price for one of these cars wherever you are. All good news when it comes to the Tygo. So there you have it guys, that was the VW Tygo. What do we think of it? It's definitely got to be a test drive in one of these because driving it about really is nice. I think you're going to agree with me. But there again, is it just another subcompact crossover SUV in the range with VW? Well, try all of them when you go down there, why not? You know, you've got the T-Cross, you've got the T-Rock, you've got the Tiguan, they're all there. Just give them all a go. But I think you will find that this is, it's got its own little space within that group. I quite like that. I've enjoyed it for the last week or so. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Yay! Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we've enjoyed filming this little car. It's been really fun to have. Um, if you wouldn't mind, give us a thumbs up. We don't get a pay rise. We don't get any you know, bonuses, but we do get a pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors and say, job well done, because a few thumbs up, it means you liked what we were doing. So don't forget that. Um, if you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Keep the bell sign unchecked because we put up so many videos and so many different things. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we don't just do car reviews. No, there's loads of other stuff going on. So if you want regular updates on all what's going on, leave that bell sign unchecked. Now, would you like something for free? Something that's just for men? Oh yes, just for us guys. It's a 220 page bookazine called The Player because you didn't think we were just a YouTube channel, did you? It's 220 pages of everything us guys absolutely love. I'm talking jet skis, motorbikes, cars, boats, holidays, golf, interview. Well, I just keep going on and on and on about it, but it's there and it's completely free of charge for you because you watch me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. And it's so easy to get because you can't have the big book. That costs 100 UK pounds. Well, you can if you pay for it, but what I'm offering you is the online version, which is exactly the same. It's no difference. And all you've got to do, hang on, you go to www.theplayer.co.uk. There you go. It's in there now. Leave it there for a couple of seconds. Just go over there, go to the top of the page where it says register. 
I don't want to know your inside leg measurement, how many dogs you've got, where you live or anything like that. All I need to know is your name and your email. Stick that in, you can then register and you can get every time a new one comes out, that's every three months, you will get that completely free of charge. You can read it online, you can download it and read it at your leisure. You can do whatever you want with it. Zoom in, zoom out, turn the pages. The guys who designed it are absolutely incredible. It's yours, it's free, get over there, do it. You might as well. I will catch you next week with something a bit different, hopefully, and we'll see what that is next week. Catch you then guys, take it easy.